Hello and welcome to Alex SpaceX Talks. It's good to have you back. Today we will start with the first topic of my astronomy video series, where I will randomly pick interesting topics in the field of space travel and astronomy in general. The topic which I've chosen for today is well known among science fiction fans, especially the ones from Star Trek and Star Wars. But it is also a rather complex one to fully understand. Therefore, I will do my very best to explain it to you in a simple way. I don't know the educational background of my audience, but just to set the scene. I was never a real pro in mathematics and physics, so I won't bother you with complicated formulas and weird sentences that you and I don't understand. My goal is to bring those complex astronomy topics to you in an easy and understandable way. But let's cut the introduction and start with our first topic, warp drive for dummies. As seen in the Star Trek series with the Starship Enterprise and in several Star Wars episodes with the Millennium Falcon, those spaceships can travel faster than the speed of light. With the assistance of a so-called warp drive, the USS Enterprise can travel up to 9,000 times faster than the speed of light. The Millennium Falcon with its hyperdrive even 9 million times. Both spaceships somehow compress the space in front of them so that the stars do not seem as distant. It almost seems as if those spaceships did not journey to the stars, the stars came towards the spaceships. If we take our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, which has a distance from Earth of around four and a half light years, which means that it takes a light beam four and a half years to reach this star, the Millennium Falcon, as an example, would be there in just a few clicks. Just as a comparison, to put this into perspective, the fastest space probe of NASA currently moves at a maximum speed of approximately 50 kilometers per second. That sounds like pretty fast, but it isn't. It is only 0.0002 times the speed of light, and it would take the probe 20,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. Light, by the way, moves with almost 300,000 kilometers per second. To give you an idea of this still insane velocity, a light beam from Earth reaches the Moon in approximately one second. In one second, a light beam can travel eight times around the Earth. In 1915, when Albert Einstein came up with his famous theory of relativity, he discovered that you cannot outrace a light beam, because the speed of light is the ultimate velocity in the universe. So, the official speed limit in our galaxy was set to the speed of light. But is this true? In 1994, physicist and Star Trek fan Miguel Olguipierre came up with his warp drive formula by which a spaceship could achieve apparent faster than light travel if a configurable energy density field lower than that of vacuum, which is negative mass, could be created. Olguipierre was experimenting with Einstein's theory and rewriting it in a way that it was still valid, but that traveling faster than the speed of light would be possible. And he succeeded. Because in Einstein's theory, the speed of light limit only applies to things moving within space, but there is no speed limit for the expansion of space itself. Alcubierre then came up with the idea of creating a warp bubble in which objects could move at infinite speeds. Einstein and Alcubierre postulated that space and time, which were once thought to be inert and static, were actually dynamic, like smooth bed sheets that can be bent, stretched or curved. To get the full picture of this, let's do a thought experiment. Imagine yourself standing on a surfboard, waiting for the perfect wave. In this case, the surfboard would represent our spaceship, equipped with a warp drive engine and with you, as passenger, surrounded by the before-mentioned warp bubble. The wave represents space. As soon as the wave hits our surfboard, the surfboard is being pushed forward by the wave. In fact, the surfboard isn't moving. 
it is the wave which is moving. The wave moves, but not the object itself. The object in this case would be the surfboard and its passenger. So Einstein's law is not violated and our spaceship can therefore travel at any speed. In other words, the space behind the spaceship in our warp bubble is expanded while the space in front is contracted. Therefore, a push-pull mechanism is accelerating the spaceship. And that is exactly how a warp drive works. Space can bend and contract, but it can also expand. Currently, we have an indirect confirmation that the speed of light is not the ultimate limit. If you take a black hole, for example, like the one I use as my studio background, beyond the event horizon, which is the exact spot where light can still escape the enormous gravity of a black hole, space is moving inwards faster than the speed of light. So far, so good. But is the theoretical concept of a warp drive really possible? There is one major issue with Einstein's formula. If we want to reach faster than light speed, an enormous amount of energy is needed. For this purpose, we need negative energy, which is exotic matter. Imagine negative energy like negative gravity, something that is not pulling, but instead pushing. So, negative mass or negative energy is needed for fueling a warp drive. Even Stephen Hawking has proven a general theorem stating that all solutions of Einstein's equations that allow faster than light travel must involve negative matter or negative energy. In theory, negative energy exists, but it has not been detected so far. In the Star Trek series, and now we're talking science fiction again, the warp drive of the USS Enterprise is simply fueled with dilithium crystals whereas the Millennium Falcon uses liquid metal. But, of course, this is Hollywood. Negative energy is not to be mistaken with dark matter, which makes out 70% of our universe. Dark matter, in fact, really exists. But here comes the thing. Negative energy behaves like dark matter. We know that our universe is currently expanding at an enormous speed. Some scientists claim that the accelerating expansion of the universe behaves like anti-gravity. Negative mass and negative energy are not forbidden in Einstein's equations, so there is hope and I am personally quite sure that if warp travel is possible, human scientists will figure it out. Now that we have seen that a warp drive in theory is possible, Let's talk about the issues and obstacles in real life in more detail. The biggest obstacle for the successful functioning of a warp drive is still the massive amount of energy needed to fuel it. With Alcubierre's original formula, the mass of the whole universe would not be sufficient to propel a warp drive engine. Younger physicists like Harold White, who came up with a slightly modified or energy sufficient version of a warp drive, so to say, suggested that 700 kilograms of negative matter would be needed to propel a spaceship. This does sound quite okay, but it is still equal to the mass of 1000 hydrogen bombs. Another comparison, to currently move a spaceship 100 meters, negative energy in the total amount of 10% of our sun's mass would be needed. With this newly modified concept of a warp drive engine from Howard White, which also changes the shape of the warp bubble, a spaceship with a 10 meter diameter of the warp bubble could reach 10 times the speed of light. Scientists around the world concluded that a warp drive may someday be possible, but that it would most probably not exceed the speed of light. Maybe 10% of the speed of light but that would already be 50,000 times faster than current standards. This really isn't science fiction anymore, because those warp drive concepts are currently being studied by a NASA company called Eagleworks Laboratories. So, to conclude today's video, we can say the following. Warp drives became more and more studied 
and do exist in theory but remain impossible. The amount of energy needed to propel such a spaceship is out of reach and the existence of negative matter has still not been proven. But negative mass and negative energy are not forbidden in Einstein's equations so there is good hope and a good chance that we might figure out how to find and how to use it. In the announcement to my video I mentioned that I'd like to show you an experiment with my cat Genie. However, the experiment did not turn out the way that I had hoped for. But don't worry, the cat is fine, all good, and I even might use her in one of my upcoming videos. The next video, which I'm going to release, will be the first one of my SpaceX ABC series, where we'll start with the letter A for autonomous drone ship. And please, if you haven't done yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel like the video and click the bell to get noticed whenever I release a new episode. In the meantime, I wish you all a wonderful week and see you soon in my next video. Go SpaceX, go Starship, ciao!